thousand. That could happen, uh, and and that would if if that does happen, that would be an indication that you don't have a very good, or you could probably improve upon your your bookkeeping system. And why would that be the case? If I if I go over to my flowchart over here, this is a desktop flowchart that we're using for the online account just to see the flow of the forms. When I'm looking at the revenue cycle uh, here, this is usually the cycle that's going to end with some kind of deposits increasing to the checking account due to goods and services provided to customers. Then the easiest system I would have would be one in which there we have like gig work. So the, a deposit was just made into the system by like YouTube and we wait till it clears the bank and then we record it with a deposit form. In that case, we're not going to have any differences in our books than what's on the bank because we made our books from the bank. But if we're at a cash register situation, we could have an issue because in that case, we want to record the sales at the cash register as they are made and might be receiving multiple forms of payment, such as cash, such as checks, such as credit cards. Now, if we're getting the payments all the time in the exact same format as they will be shown on the bank statement, then we can deposit the sales receipt directly into the checking account as though it's a deposit. But oftentimes that won't be the case, at least for some types of payments, such as credit cards and cash, for example. So for those items, if we use the sales receipt to deposit them directly into our bank account, it's going to be a problem for reconciling because the bank isn't going to have each individual sale deposited in that way. Instead, they're going to have a grouping of all the cash that you deposited at the end of the night as one lump sum or all the payments that the credit card decided to group and possibly take a fee from that they then put into the checking account as one lump sum. That's why you need to use that clearing account that we talked about uh, in, order to, in order to take it in and out of the clearing account to make the deposit in the same format that it's gonna be appearing on the bank statement. So if you find yourself here, we're at the reconciliation and it's like, okay, now I have to check off multiple deposits uh, on my side to tie out to one deposit over here on the bank statement, then you're gonna have to do what you have to do here and then going forward, fix your accounting process so that, so that, that you're grouping your payments here on the sales receipt into the clearing account and then taking it out of the clearing account and putting it into the bank in the same format that will be on the bank statement. So let me just show you that one more time. If I go to the balance sheet here, this is the clearing account. So when you make sales, it would go into here. And if I go into that account, you can see that it's gonna go, uh, it's going, this account is going up with the payments. These are the payments on the invoices from customers. And then it's going up with sales receipts, the transactions where we get money at the point of sale at like a check cash register. And then it's going down when we deposit, transferring it out of this account into the bank account. As we transfer it out of this account to the bank account, we can group multiple sales items so that it's deposited at one lump sum into the bank account. If there were fees, such as credit card fees, you can go down here and say that you had bank I'm not going to record this, but bank service charges and say that that was removed so that the net amount that hits your checking account will match what's on the bank statement. If it doesn't, again, you're going to, you're going to end up with some messy reconciliations. All right, I'm going to close that out. Do you want to leave without saving? I'm going to say yes and go back on over. Now, considering that that, that is all uh, situated, then it should be really easy, but let's consider what the bank knows about if, for example, you're using bank feeds to help you with the bank reconciliation or possibly record the transactions. When we're looking at the deposit side of things, uh, if you just deposit cash into the checking account, you're at, a, you're at the, 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 the register, you take the money, you deposit it into the bank at the end of the night. What does the bank know then? They only know the lump sum of the deposit and the date that you put the money into the bank. So if you pull and use bank feeds, that's what you're going to have to tie into the, those two amounts. It's not going to, you're not going to know like the customer or any other detail, just those two things, right? Uh, if on the other hand, it's an electronic transfer, you're getting paid with electronic transfers of some kind, 
then the bank is going to know the deposit amount. It's going to know the date of the transfer, which will typically be pretty close to the date that the transfer like was facilitated, right? And and uh, it might have in the memo information that can help you to determine who gave you the money, which gives you a little bit more information to do the reconciliation uh, process. So also just realize that these dates here are always going to be either on the same day or most likely after the dates in our system if we're using a full service accounting system because a full service accounting system would be one in which we make the deposit on our end record it and then we use the bank feeds or bank reconciliation to match to the to what's on the bank side and it takes a few days even with an electronic transfer for for our side to clear the bank so we would expect the date for the deposits if they were electronic transfers or even if they were us depositing money directly into the bank to be close but possibly not exact to the date in our system and it's always going to be a little bit later on the bank side than our side if that's not the case in our practice problem it's because you know it's a practice problem so bear with us on the practice problem so that's going to be the general idea we're just going to take in time